Let's start tonight with a brief Hannity history lesson in the so-called norms and constitutional duties surrounding Supreme Court appointments. The media mob will not tell you this. Top Democrats want you to believe it would be improper for President Trump to nominate anyone to replace Justice Ginsburg during a presidential election year. That is a complete, total lie and fabrication. Here are the facts. We'll lay it out just straight up. News you could use that the media mob won't want you to see. Article 2, Section 2 of our Constitution is clear that the president shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers, and judges of the Supreme Court and all other officers of the United States. The U.S. Senate's role is to advise and consent. In other words, their constitutional role, senators vote whether to confirm the president's nominee. There is no exception whatsoever in the Constitution for election years. And since our country's founding, here are the facts. There have been 29 vacancies at the U.S. Supreme Court during a presidential election year. 29. And 29 times before a sitting U.S. president has nominated a replacement in an election year. Well, 19 of those times when this party, the same party as the White House, controlled the House and Senate. On the case of the president and the Senate aligning, 17 out of those 19 judges were confirmed in an election year. When the presidency and the Senate are controlled by opposing parties, there's been 10 examples of that. Well, only one out of 10 got confirmed before the election. Two were confirmed after the election when the president's party won the election. So, simple facts. Duly elected conservatives, they prefer to appoint what we call originalists or constitutionalists. And liberal Democratic presidents, they like to appoint judicial activists, things they'll never get done at the ballot box or legislatively. In fact, the last time a Supreme Court nominee was approved by an opposing party during an election year before the election was in 19, I'm sorry, 1888. And that's when then-President Grover Cleveland, a Democrat, got two nominees approved by a Republican Senate. In other words, 132 years ago. That didn't stop Democrats in 2016 from demanding that the Republican-controlled Senate Again, the other party vote to confirm Judge Merrick Garland, Obama's pick to replace the late Justice Scalia. Watch this. The American people deserve to be a fully staffed Supreme Court of nine. The president nominates and then the Senate advises and consents or not, but they go forward with the process. The American people expect Judge Garland, the president's nominee, to be given a fair hearing and a timely vote in the Senate. The Senate should do their job. Every day that goes by without a ninth justice is another day the American people's business is not getting done. When the Constitution is 100 percent clear, the President of the United States has the right to nominate someone to be a justice of the Supreme Court. Senate's function is to hold hearings and to vote. Republicans controlled the Senate. Merrick Garland was never confirmed, as President Obama once famously stated, actually many times said, elections have consequences. That includes a Republican Senate majority. They can come, but they're in the back. And in 2016, the American people put Donald Trump in the White House. In 2018, the GOP increased its majority in the U.S. Senate, duly elected Republican senators. Let us be clear, as the Constitution prescribes, the president will nominate, the Senate will advise and consent. The current hysteria surrounding precedent is laughable. Democrats, they don't give a rip about precedent. In years past, Democrats could have easily filibustered, well, a judicial appointment. In fact, under George W. Bush, well, guess what? Democratic senators, they broke centuries of precedent. They're the ones that began filibustering judicial nominees with regularity. The Democrats did that. 2003, an attorney, you might remember his name, Miguel Estrada, became the first ever Court of Appeals nominee to be successfully filibustered. He wasn't the last. Harry Reid and company, well, numerous judges were blocked by the Democrats using the filibuster, which had not been used prior to that. And guess what? In 2013, Obama's president, his fellow Democrat, then Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, he broke precedent once again. Not the Republicans, the Democrats. He triggered the so-called nuclear option, which eliminated filibusters for judicial nominees. In other words, they would need cloture. They would need just a simple majority. 
The Democrats did this. Now, they did it in part so Harry Reid could load the all-important D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals with liberal nominees. They have stacked the court in the past. So now, as they are threatening to do so with the United States Supreme Court, with just 43 days before the election, believe they will do it with the Supreme Court. They mean what they say. And tonight, if Democrats are upset, they have nobody but themselves to blame. And make no mistake, they're very upset. As we speak, they are throwing a collective major political temper tantrum, as are their friends all over the mob and the media, like this former fake news CNN host having vowed to burn the country to the ground. Jeffrey Tubin, so-called legal expert, probably one of the dumbest lawyers in the country, calling for unrest in the streets. Others like Obama wingman Eric Holder. When they go low, we kick them. And Democratic Senator Ed Markey, they're calling for the Democrats to pack and stack the Supreme Court, add as many liberal justices as they can. More Democrats are threatening to end the filibuster altogether, meaning now on legislation, which has never been done before. That's never happened. And some are vowing revenge by adding Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico as new states. Why? Because they figured that'll be four more Democratic senators to guarantee them a Democratic Senate in perpetuity. And as Chucky e. Schumer is now threatening and Pelosi threatening, nothing they're saying is off the table. They're threatening the entire country to upend every precedent we've ever had. They're the only ones that have done it in the past. They opened the door. This is what they're threatening now. Take a look. We must also commit to using every procedural tool available to us to ensure that we buy ourselves the time necessary. But once we win the majority, God willing, everything is on the table. If. In fact, um, they are successful in placing uh, a justice on, on the court. I think that what Democrats have to do, um, assuming that Biden is president and there is a, a Senate majority in for the Democrats, we need to think about court reform. And at a minimum, um, as part of that reform package, uh, I think additional justices need to be placed on the, uh, on the Supreme Court. Now, you got to remember, too, not one Democrat ever spoke out about Hillary's, oh, deleted subpoenaed emails and, and bleach bit and hammers. Uh, they never once complained about her dirty, even the New York Times finally called it, Russian disinformation dossier that became the foundation of illegal warrants, premeditated fraud on a FISA court to spy on a presidential candidate, his transition team, deep into the presidency of Donald Trump. They ignored all of that. And keep in mind, court packing is an unethical process that would increase the number of justices. Oh, let's bring her from 9 to 13, thereby giving a sitting president an opportunity to control the court. It's a practice that is so controversial, so corrupt, they say they're honoring Justice Ginsburg. She was against it. Take a look. Nine seems to be a good number, and it's been that way for, for a long time. I have heard that there are some people on the Democratic side who would like to increase the number of judges. I think that was a bad idea when President Franklin Delano Roosevelt tried to pack the court. But today, the extreme, far-left, socialist, radical Democratic Party clearly doesn't agree. In fact, you heard the, well, real Speaker of the House, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, saying that Ginsburg's death should, quote, radicalize all Democrats. Right on cue, there's Speaker in name only, Nancy Pelosi, seemingly threatening to impeach the president, impeach the attorney general as a tactic to stall the Supreme Court nomination. Take a look. You and the House could move to impeach President, President Trump or Attorney General Barr as a way of stalling and preventing the Senate from acting on this nomination. Well, we have our options. We have arrows in our quiver that I'm not about to discuss right now. To be clear, you're not taking any arrows out of your quiver. You're not ruling anything out. Good morning. Sunday morning. The. Uh, we have a responsibility. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. 
Arrows in the quiver. Wow, okay, here we go. Anyway, Nancy Pelosi kind of malfunctions live on camera. The Democratic strategy is clear, it is predictable, and it is dangerous. Democrats, the media mob, their state-run TV across the country, their allies all over, they want to upend our entire system of precedent, the entire thing. They're throwing a massive temper tantrum. They're smearing President Trump. They will absolutely vilify any nominee. This is now a common practice for Democrats. It's actually a term. We call it borking, after what Senate Democrats did to Judge Robert Bork. Similar disgusting, baseless smear campaigns were conducted against Justice Clarence Thomas. We watched the repulsive statements and actions more recently with Justice Kavanaugh. No matter who the president nominates, no matter who's qualified or how qualified or how reputable he or she, apparently a she, uh, will be Democrats will wage a smear, slander, besmirchment campaign, the likes of which this country's never seen. What do they care? They've only dragged the country through the mud for four years. They'll claim abortion will be illegal. They'll play on racial issues, mark my words. 